All right, guys. For those of you that are here, you guys, you guys are here because you love fish, right? Yeah. All right. First of all, we're gonna introduce ourselves. My name is Cal. I'm Allie. And we work with the Department of Natural Resources, as you guys know, the DNR. And we work for Parks and Trails. So if you guys come down to Fort Snellville State Park, how many of you guys been down to Fort Snellville State Park? If you haven't been down there, shame on you because it's just right down there. And guess what? If you haven't been down to Fort Snellville State Park, you are actually throwing your money away because that's your tax money. So you guys should all go down to Fort Snellville State Park and fish and do all the hikes and all the stuff like that. The cool thing is, I see that some of you guys love to fish. You have your fishing pole there. A lot of you guys probably don't know this, but if you fish in most state parks, you don't require a fishing license. And the cool thing is, you can also take the fish home. So if you fish right here, you all have to have a fishing license. If you go into a state park, most state parks do not require a fishing license. You can just go in there and fish and take the fish home. So that's one thing that a lot of communities don't know that. Now, talking about fish, you guys have, you guys all have this book? If you don't, they have it up there. They have it translating to Hmong too. Of course, some of you guys probably don't know how to read Hmong, do you? But we have it in English and Hmong. We also have it in Korean and Spanish. So, if you read those languages, you can get this book too. It has all the information in there. Now, since we're gonna do this really quickly, for those that don't have a poster, I have a whole box of posters. You can take take as many as you want. These are pretty cool posters. They are actually very, very popular. So, go grab a fish poster if you want. If you can't get a poster from here and you forget or you lost your poster, you can come down to Fort Sonoma State Park and ask Ellie and I and we'll give you a poster. Of course, we, you have to pay us a couple hundred thousand dollars. Just kidding. All right, now, now that we're all here and talk about rules and regulation, does anybody know, since you guys all have fishing poles, does anybody know what today is? Besides Mong Day. You guys all have fishing poles, so you should know what day today is. Fishing opener. Perfect! Woo! Fishing opener today. Today, you can catch a lot of the fish, and it's legal to take, as long as you have a fishing license. But for those of you that just came, I already told you guys, most state parks do not require a fishing license if you are a Minnesota resident. All or most? Most. Most? Most. Yeah. If state park that has trout, state park that if you fish with trout or has trout, you have to have a fishing license. So for, for example, white water state park requires a fishing license because they have trout. Most of the uh, they park up north on North Shore. They have trout and salmon, so it requires fish license. But Fort Snellville State Park by the airport. If you guys come down there and you are a Minnesota resident, you don't need a fishing license at all. And I know that most of you don't even know that. Doesn't matter how old you are, you can fish for free with no fishing license. Well, as long as you cook the fish and invite me for dinner, then I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Kidding. So, now that we're all here and we love to fish and it's fishing opener, let me ask you guys this. Before today, before fishing opener, can you go out there and fish? Anybody, can you go out there and fish before fishing opener? What is it? Yeah. Yes. The answer is yes. That's a perfect answer. A lot of people don't know that. They wait until the they wait until fishing opener day to go fishing. That's not true. It's okay. It's a lot of fish you can catch it year round. You can keep it year round, like sunfish or bowhead. So you don't have to wait until today to go fishing. Only a few fish that are legal during and after a fishing opener. And one of those fish is this one right here. 
Anybody know what kind of fish this is? Walleye. What is it? Walleye. Walleye. And what is the walleye? <laughs> Anybody? The walleye is very important in Minnesota. Why is the walleye very important in Minnesota? Anybody want to take a guess? Is oh, come on, you guys are all Minnesotan. You should know this. State fish? Minnesota State Fish. Now, if you think about it, long time ago, there is no Minnesota fishing opener. Minnesota fishing opener is dedicated to this, so it's walleye opener. So today, walleye is legal and northern pike is legal. So basically, fishing opener is this guy right here, walleye opener. And over over the uh, years, we just call it fishing opener, but because of this guy right here, very popular. This one also tastes really, really good. So if you ever catch one that is this big, just let me know. I'll take it home and I will tell anybody else either. <laughs> so, walleye fishing opener. Now. Since you guys all fish, and this is a very easy question, but not too many people can answer. Are you guys ready? Raise your hand if you know the answer. What is a fish? What's a fish? Never mind. See, it's harder to answer, isn't it? What is a fish? Can somebody tell me what a fish is? Yes. It's a type of sea animal. So that's a good answer, but it could be also a turtle too. Turtle live in the sea. Anybody else? Oh, now nobody want to answer anymore. Yes, what is it? Perfect. Animals that swim underwater. But we also have a lot of insects that swim underwater. So good answer though. Anybody else? See how hard it is to answer what a fish is? And the reason I ask that is because when you guys fish, a lot of times there's people around the world that have never seen a fish. And they will ask you what you're doing and you say you're fishing and they say what's a fish? You have to be able to explain to them what a fish is. So looking at this, it's a fish. So how can you tell me that this is a fish? Yes? A fish is a sea animal that lives in the water. Perfect. So also a description of a really nice maybe seal, which is not a fish. So good answer there. Anybody else? I told you it's much harder than you think. All right, look at this fish and tell me what this fish have. Gills. Fish have gills. What else? Fins. Look at all the fins a fish have. What else? What is it? I know it. Scale. So three things that describe a fish to anybody that know what a fish is. So remember that a fish have fins. Scales and gill. Not all fish have scales though. Catfish don't have scales. Sharks don't have scales. Sharks are fish. So make sure of that. Scale, fins, and gill. So those are it. Now, now that we know about fish, let me ask you guys. Some of you guys have a poster already, and if you haven't have a poster, there's a box there full of posters. Grab as many as you want. Now Question for you guys. How many different kinds of fish live in Minnesota? How many different species? How many different kinds? Who knows? Raise your hand if you know how many different kinds of fish in Minnesota. If you can't answer this, you're in trouble. You can't go fish. Anybody? Take a guess. Yes. 25? Going once? Going twice? Anybody else? 50. 50? Anybody else? 35. 35? 38? 100? 100? Getting closer. 50. Getting closer. 50? 50? 200? No. 200? Oh, no, no. Too 110? much. 110? 110? 110? 110 plus 52. Quick. 162. 162. 162. Minnesota have 162 different kinds of fish. Ranging from the largest one, it's called a lake sturgeon. Lake sturgeon in Minnesota can grow over eight feet long. And they can live over 150 years old. The smallest fish is called a least, third, uh, least darter, which is only about inch long. 
So ranging from Lake Sturgeon to Lee's Darter, there are a lot of fish in Minnesota. Most people, most Minnesotans only know probably about 10 fish. That's about it. But we do have a lot of fish in here. Some fish love living in lakes like this. Some love living in large river. Others love cold water like cold springs or deep lake. So if you want to fish for a particular type of fish, sometimes you have to find the best habitat for it. If you don't find the best habitat for it, you will not find the fish you're looking for. Now, anybody know how many walleye you can take out of Minnesota water? Or you can keep, I should say. How many walleye can you keep a day? All right, none of you guys should go fishing now. <laughs> we'll say four. In general, how many water can you take out or keep? Five. Five? Anybody else? Nobody Ten. got the right answer yet. What is it? Three. Three. Zero. Zero. <laughs> none of you guys got the right answer yet. If you had, if you pick up a fishing regulation, you should know by now. What is it? Six. 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 In Minnesota, in general, not all water. In general, you can take up to six walleye. So, but if you look at the regulation, it says daily limit and possession limit. Remember that those are sometimes the same and sometimes they're different. So, if you guys catch six walleye in this lake, which this lake does have walleye, if you catch six walleye in this lake, today and you take it home. The daily limit is six. Possession limit is also six. So if you catch six walleye today, you take it home today, you eat three for dinner. That means you still have three left in the fridge. Tomorrow, when you come back, how many fish, how many walleye can you catch? Three. Three, anybody else? Three, six, zero. six, yeah, five, zero, zero, six. six, here's the answer. That is actually a trick question that a lot of people never get and they're confused with the regulation. You catch six walleye today, you go home, you eat three for dinner, you guys got three left. Remember your possession limit is six. Tomorrow when you come back, you can catch unlimited walleye. Did you get it? You can catch unlimited walleye. I didn't say how many you can keep. That is part of the confusion a lot of people don't know about. Catching is different from keeping. You can catch as many as you want as long as you release it back. But you can only keep three because you still got three in the fridge. So remember that. Now, see this net right here? This is what the DNR used to calculate how many fish per species that you can take home. So since we don't have too many walleye, you can only keep six walleye. So what Ali and I am gonna do is that we're gonna take this net. This is an official SANE net, S-E-I-N-E, SANE net that the DNR use. You guys cannot use this net. The only net that you guys can use is about 20 feet long to catch minnow. You cannot use that 20 feet long to catch bass or trout or whatever. Only minnows. So, for us, we do an educational program and survey so we can use this official DNR net. So you guys want to see what fish in there? Yeah! yeah. Alright. You ready? Yeah. So you guys can come close to the jump in the water. Oh, you in the water. Oh, you in the water. Oh, you in the water. Get out here. Okay, then you just watch one. They're so small. Yes, okay, no catch nobody. Go to the other side, baby. Yeah, perfect. Alright, go to the other side. Yeah, I gotta see what kind of fish in there. I bet you there's a lot of turtles.
Look, see, see what they're doing? They, they're gonna try and see what kind of fish they're gonna round up. Watch. To learn. You don't learn, you're not gonna do good in school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it does get deep really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so if I fall in, I know there's like 50 people gonna help Ellie pull me out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Alright. I don't think I can go any deeper, so I'm just gonna come back. Oh! I already got water in my waiter. Oh no! Yeah, so we're just gonna go. Alright, walk up there. Okay, let's back up now. Let's back up and see what fish comes out. It's pretty heavy. Right here, it's a crawfish or a crayfish. 
It depends on which part of the United States you're from. If you're from the south, it's called a crawfish. If you're from the north, it's called a crayfish. If you're from somewhere else, you can give me a name. Crawdad. Crawdad, there it is. Now, we do have a lot of crayfish in rivers and lakes. These are edible, just like little shrimp. So you can collect them if you have license and eat them. But they also make really good bait for largemouth bass and walleyes and northern pike. So you can catch them and use that too, that's fine. But they do have pinchers and it will hurt. Oh, this guy refused to pinch me. Be careful with the now, so a little crawdad or crayfish. Now, all right, look at this. It's a nice fish. Just to let you know, this guy is not legal yet. So, if you catch this guy, you have to put it back in the water. And these are probably in the end of uh, like sweet. See, in the end of the month or oh, another one. Check your regulation booklet. So, anybody know what kind of fish this is? What is it? Largemouth bass. This is a largemouth bass. This is a very popular fish. In fact, it's so popular that people have tournament to catch these fish. Bass tournament. Now, even though we call it bass, this is actually a sunfish. It's in the sunfish family, so you can also call this guy a sunny. Mm -hmm. So it's a largemouth bass. We have two species of bass, uh, uh, the largemouth bass and the smallmouth bass. They look very similar. The largemouth bass is this guy right here. The mouth go beyond the eye. The smallmouth, the mouth actually go right on the eyes or in front of it. The largemouth bass is a very popular fish. And it's also very tasty. They do get really big, popular, and tasty. So if you want to fish for these guys, use a really nice minnow lure. Or crayfish will do it too. Oh, they also take worms too. So a wide variety of bait, which works really well. All right. Yeah, let's have one of these little small ones. There's a little one right here. He's quite small. <coughs> All right. See this little guy right here? If you ever catch one of these, you caught the fish that everyone catches. This is a bluegill. Perfect. It's a tiny little bluegill. In fact, part of the gill right there at the tip is blue. That's how they got the name. This is a sunny, a sunfish or a panfish, which is a, a sunfish family. I never knew they got yeah, they are. These are little babies. This guy is probably about two years old. So they're just little babies and you catch here. You probably can catch a bunch here. And they are also the safest fish to eat. So if you want to eat, they are the safest fish to eat because they don't eat a lot of pollution. So they're really safe. Are they white bass? There are white bass in here. In fact, the DNR stocked white bass in there a couple years ago. There should be some in there. So, all right. Now. These little guys, like I said, they're really tasty, so you can actually eat them. They're safer than catching catfish. You eat catfish. Teresa, I never caught catfish. You never caught a catfish? Probably. All right, here goes. This guy looks like it got, it got bitten. On the back, probably by an older pike or a bass. So this is a black crappie. Minnesota have two species of crappie. The black crappie and the white crappie. This is a black crappie. The reason I can tell is because they have random spots on their body. The white crappie have vertical bars. So that's what it is. Crappie are probably some of the best eating fish. I don't eat fish, but I eat crappie. That's controversial, isn't it? So, this little fish right here, in fact, if you look at its tail, if I turn around, look at its tail, it's been injured. It's probably oh, no. got chased and bitten by a northern pike. Northern pike and large northern pike will eat anything half its size. So a little cross, a little crappie like this is probably snack. In fact, a couple of years ago, I forgot what year it is. The uh, record has been broken now, but Lake Phelan got the record muskie. 
in there a couple oh. years ago. Oh, nice. So now the record is broken. I think I think the record is in Lake Area now or somewhere. But we still have a lot of pikes in there and musky in here. So come out here and fish. So nice little crappie right out here. All right, some of the bigger one. I know that most of the little fish in here are bluegill. So it seems like we only see this one can little show a little more on the gill. You see that? Yep. A little bluegill right there. Now, what you catch in here are probably just largemouth bass and bluegill. Most of them in there, but historically, Lake Phelan. Historically, if you're talking about 11,000 years ago, Lake Phelan used to be a large river that flows out this way all the way down to the Mississippi River. The lake, the lake is actually still a continual river. I don't know if you guys know that, but this lake does have current. And they flow down to Maryland. And from Maryland, it went underground. I don't know if you guys know that, but it is actually a little river that goes underground all the way down to the Mississippi River. And the reason I know that is because you go up by Keller, uh, Keller Park, it is a little stream that comes down. So, so nice little sunfish right now. All right, we also have perch and catfish in here. Unfortunately, we didn't catch it. A lot of turtles in there. Yeah, we have a lot of turtles in there, and this is probably the best time to find little baby turtles too. In fact, at the park, Ellen and I didn't see one, but our staff see a lot of baby turtles, and they're coming out this time of the year. So when you're driving on the road, look out for baby turtles. They're really, really cute, about this big. I know, I know. So yeah, so just look out for that. All right. Since you guys know about fish and it's fishing opener, I want you guys to go out and fish. Especially come out to Fort Solano State Park. And if you don't know how to fish, Alan and I also teach fishing classes. Guess what? They're free fishing classes. Come out to Fort Solano State Park and we'll show you guys how to fish. If you don't know how to fish. If your mom and dad is, you know, they like TV too much and they're watching TV, they don't want to <laughs> teach you guys how to fish, tell them to drive you guys down to Fort Solano. And then they can watch on the phone. <laughs> oh my God. So, all right. Any questions? Yeah. Any questions, kiddos? Anybody all right. Know about anything? All right. If no questions, thank you. Like I said, the box of there is full of posters. Grab them. And if you guys want to come out of Fort Tonello State Park, we have tons of programs like canoeing, fishing, nature walk, learn about birds and other stuff like that. So, it's your state park. If you don't come down there. You're wasting your money away, like I mentioned. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Told you to go. Please 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 go.